So do you ever feel like there's two parts to you? One part where you can be super focused in your weight loss and your fitness and your health and another part where you just seem to sabotage all that hard work, all that progress is just gone because for some reason you seem to be working against yourself. And Why is that? In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about that fluctuation, about how we've all got this natural settling point where we always seem to come back. No matter how, what progress we make, for some reason, we always seem to end up back at the same settling point. And it's frustrating and people think, you know, am I different? Is there something weird about me? I'm here to tell you today that it's perfectly normal. We're going to talk about that and perhaps what's going on and you'll soon realise that actually there's probably some deep-rooted issues that you've got in your subconscious mind which is creating this. I'm going to talk to you about why it happens, how it happens and also what you can do about it. So make sure you watch the whole of this video to get the strategies at the end to change this. Okay, get the glasses on. I'm going to use this diagram now to kind of explain what I'm talking about, okay? So you can kind of see that this, that this solid white line represents our progress, okay? So as we're moving along, our weight, our health will naturally fluctuate. And as that fluctuates, our momentum towards a certain aspect of life will fluctuate as well. Sometimes everything's going right and we're making huge progress. Other times, everything's kind of going wrong, momentum's towards reducing that or, or restricting that progress. And that's completely natural. I see it all the time with campers that come to Team Boot Camp and people that we work with in regards to weight loss. Okay, now what you, what you need to imagine is when you're right down the bottom here, when you're right down the bottom here, like there's very little effort and energy going into what you're trying to do. Okay, whether it's to lose 10 pounds, four stone, whatever it does, doesn't matter. It's exactly the same. Okay, so down here, there's just like, you've got yourself into a rut where you just seem to be sabotaging what you're trying to do. Like you might say to yourself, I really want to lose weight. I want to get fit. I finally want to run that marathon, whatever it is. And then you look at your actions and what you're eating and, and it just doesn't align. It just doesn't line up. You know, why is that? We're going to talk about that in a bit. Uh, and what we actually end up doing is developing what we call our settling point. So there'll be a particular weight, there'll be a particular image, uh, fitness level, where we kind of always revert back to. But I don't know what that is for you, but stick it in the comment below. Is there a, a weight where, say you're trying to get to 80 kilos or whatever it is, and you always seem to revert back to that weight? Okay, so there'll be a point in which you always settle on. So you, your weight will rise up until a point when you're like, okay, right, you know, this, this is the settling point now for me. Now, the settling point for me is about 92 kilos, okay? Everybody's different, different body types and all that kind of stuff. But for me, it's about 92 kilos. When I hit that, I'm like, all right, enough's enough, okay? And I start working towards improving that. I don't let myself go above that. Now, that has, that can go up, you know, as time goes on, you can you can develop like, you know, you might be, oh, I'm always 92, I'm always 92, I'm always 92, then oh, now I'm always 93, I'm always 94, and now I'm always 95, you know what I mean? And you see, it can rise, but the idea is we want to change it so that it's constantly coming down. Um, now, on the flip side of that, we also have these highs where we're just working really well. And we've got stacks of positive energy and positive emotions towards what we're trying to do, okay? Now, emotion, if we think about that, emotion, energy in motion. We don't do anything without emotion being involved, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about the four types of emotion um, involved in this, but I just want you to understand like it's natural to flow like this. Now, a couple of things that I want you to, to bear in mind is that when we're, let me do a different color, when we're up here, we have just got a ton of confidence about what we're doing. Loads of confidence, you know what I mean? We're just like, yes, I am nailing it. This is fantastic, okay? And, and actually what can happen is we start to take an eye off the ball. Again, it's perfectly normal, we all do it. Down here, the opposite being, we're just in so much doubt. We're like, how do I get started again? Why have I let myself get into this state again? I've done it again, I've sabotaged my progress, and blah, blah, blah. and we just oscillate between these two points, okay? And our weight, I'm talking about weight now, but it's the same 
for, for most things in life just fluctuates up and down and up and down. And, and actually all this is familiar to us. Like we know this, we know these feelings, we know, you know, it's just, it's quite comfortable in our familiarity, okay? We understand what it feels like to be in here. So therefore, to carry this on, if we was to make progress and, you know, up here, it's going to feel even more unfamiliar. It feels strange. Our body almost starts to resonate on a different frequency because all of that just seems strange. And what I mean by that, if I put it into like something that's um, objective, it's like, all of a sudden you're wearing different size clothes. You're, order, you're ordering different you know, meals when you eat out in a restaurant. You're eating differently on a daily basis. You, know, you might be drinking more water than you have in the past. You might be doing more fitness than you have in the past. You might be running further, lifting more. It's all strange. You know, people start acting in a, straight, in a different way as well. They start saying, you know, what happened to you? How come you started you know, lifting that? And, and I always remember a story where I had to have this medical... Uh, and I got on the scales and, and my, at the time, I was much younger. My settling point was about 86, 87 kilos. And I remember getting on these scales for this medical and the, and, and the doctor said, okay, off you get, you're 80 kilos. And I was like, no, no, your scales must be wrong. And the doctor's like, no, my scales are not wrong. You're 80 kilos. And I said, I can't be. I'm always like 86, 87. The guy said, the doctor said, you're 80 kilos. And I, I was like, it really shook my world. Like, I didn't know kind of, how to act, how to be at 80 kilo. It was just weird. I would then went, I would then go on and I remember I was doing loads of like CrossFit and, and heavy lifting at the time. And I got up to so I was deadlifting like 220 kilos, which is like two and a half times my body weight at the time at a weight of 76 kilos. And I remember telling my mate who does like loads of fitness and, and, and who's on the front cover of them, um, men's health and all this. And I says, oh yeah, I lifted 220 kilos when I was 76 kilos. And he went, when the hell have you ever been 76 kilos? Like even, you know, people have this idea of, of your identity and your own settling point and it's just strange. Um, so that feels different. So this is kind of, like I said, this is, this is perfectly normal. We kind of go up and down and up and down. And if you're watching this video, you're probably at one of these states where you're kind of floundering a little bit. So what I want to do now is I just want to talk about what actually goes on and why this happens and the four emotions that are involved in this change. But before I want to do that, I want you to understand that all the way through the middle of here is your average. And remember that we are the, av we are the average of everything we do. Okay, so think about your average, where your weight or health or fitness fluctuates and, and think about the, the average of it. Now, ultimately, long-term change means changing that average and improving that average, okay? And it can take time. So, again, we're going to talk about that as we get more and more into these videos. So, let's talk a little bit then about... What kind of goes on here? Okay, so there's four primary emotions involved in this. And we're going to draw it out and talk you through it so you can understand kind of where you are and map out what's happening. Okay, so when we first start making progress, we've usually built up a load of anger um, predominantly, sometimes frustration, maybe shame. But all these things focus into anger. We just like, enough is enough. Okay, and it's powerful enough for us to do something about it. And all that works towards creating what I'm gonna call drive, but it might be motivation, it might be dedication, determination, whatever, but fundamentally a drive to improve and to change what you're doing, okay? And we build it up and that's fueled by this anger. And as we go and we start to make progress, we then develop pride. We're really proud of our results. You know, we, we, we really, we, our self-esteem goes up. You know, we, we want to share our results. We're really happy. Um, but as the saying goes, pride always comes before a fall. And what follows pride is we develop this comfort. We start to take our eye off the ball because 
you know, we're well away from either our settling point, which we, we want to get away from, and we're very, very close to our upper settling point where we're just, you know, we, we, we know what it's like to be within that range, um, and we get really comfortable. And comfort, there's a saying that, that good is the enemy of the great, and sometimes we get comfortable enough and we stop doing the things that get us the results, or we stop looking for ways to progress. We stop trying to um, improve the digits that we see on the scale or the measurements that we see around our body or even the speed in which we run, all these different ways of, of you know, of, of improving. Um, and this is kind of what happens, you know, so you, you have this bout of anger where you're like, okay, enough's enough, let's do it. You know? And so some people, it's right, I book into, you know, book into boot camp and go and get some results. I just need some help to kickstart something and get going, get myself out of my regular life so I can start making a bit of progress, okay? The progress then becomes, you know, progress is the biggest motivating factor for people, all right? When we start getting going, you know, and that really, really drives us on, then we kind of develop pride, okay, pride, what, what follows pride is then comfort. We take our eye off the ball and we've got this constant cycling. And this is why we oscillate up and down and up and down and up and down. And the point in which is your settling point generates that anger, that shame, whatever it is. Okay, and that causes us to take action. So I want to do two things now. I want to go, I want to go in two areas now. One is I want to talk about why we do this. Okay. Uh, some deep-rooted reasons why we do this and we kind of sabotage ourselves. And in doing that, I want to talk about how you can, in theory, change it. In practice, it is tough and you might need some help with that. And then ultimately, I want to talk about how you can start to change this so that our long-term progress is positive. We change that settling point, we change the average, and we're just getting better in what we're doing. So before we do that, let me know in the comments below, is this something that you've experienced? What is your settling point? What is the point which you're like, okay, right now I know something's got to happen. I've spoke to hundreds of people where they have this, what they call the parlor line. Parlor handles the inquiries and bookings at team boot camp. And people have this line where they hit this certain line, this certain weight, and they're like, right, phone parlor, get booked in. You know, so, you know, I, I see this all the time. Okay, so fundamentally, when we talk about like sabotage and self-sabotage, there is lots of different reasons for that. I experienced this recently myself. You know, I have this process and, and pretty much everyone I know have this process of like sabotaging their process, their progress when they start to feel comfortable. You know, they seem to be doing really, really well. And for some reason, they just fuck it up. In fact, it's almost sometimes it's like, it's like you do really, really well just so you can sabotage it on purpose. Like just so you can beat yourself with a metaphorical stick because you're not worthy or whatever. And usually the reason for this is some kind of trauma. Usually it's childhood trauma. And when I'm talking about trauma, it doesn't have to be, you know, I was in a car crash, I got blown up in the war or anything like that. It can be, you know, there can be other bits of trauma that we kind of pick up, especially when we're young and very, very impressionable. Um, now, recently I've been doing a lot of what, what's called shadow work, which is some of the teachings from the fathers of modern day psychology, Carl Jung, who was a Swiss psychologist and he did loads of work. One, one of the core principles that he came up with is the idea that there is a, a shadow self. It's a part of yourself that is subconscious. It's not seen. And one of his famous quotes is that the adult develops to protect the child. This is quite deep and I'm, this is very superficial what I'm talking about here. And I'm by no means a psychologist, but I understand the benefit that doing some of this shadow work can do. And he sort of said, you know, you know, that when we're young and impressionable, things happen and, and it does cause this little bit of trauma and, and then we develop these practices to protect ourselves, okay? It's almost like, okay, the brain can't cope with that or it doesn't want to deal with that and it will cut it off from the rest of the brain and, and hold it off in the subconscious mind and it's there, but we just, you know, it's, we don't often think about it. Sometimes we don't even know it's there, but it, it's involved in, in sabotaging our pros, progress. Now, now, some of this trauma doesn't have to be from your childhood. It can be well into adult life as well, but a lot of it is 
developed during childhood. Carl Jung also said another famous quote, and that is, until you make the subconscious conscious, it will control your life and you will call it fate. When we look back at our progress in regards to our weight loss and fitness, sometimes we sort of think, oh yeah, it's just weight is fate, you know, it's meant to be, blah, blah, blah. No, we, that's what we call it. But no, no, there's these things going on in your mind that is causing this. And if you can unpick that, if you can unravel it and, and, and what Carl Jung calls integrate it into the whole self, you can stop a lot of this. Now, this isn't like a flick a switch and it's all sorted, you know, and it's it can be a tough process to get through and it's something that perhaps you would need some guidance on. So like you, probably, you know, I've had this fluctuating weight and body image and all this kind of stuff and I've never I've always said that you know I'm not I'm not bothered about having a great physique or anything like that. you know as long as I'm kind of winning races or doing really well in ultra runs which is my chosen sport then I'm happy you know I'm not bothered about in fact I quite liked being the fat guy that could run and you know actually that was just a coping mechanism that was just something I said because I struggled to change my image Really, I did a lot of work on this and I wasn't going to go into it too much in this video but I remember I was taking my grandchild home to, to his mum and I was driving along and I was kind of doing this little bit of shadow work as I was driving along. I concentrate on the road but you can kind of, you know, you're just kind of thinking as you do and I suddenly, it suddenly dawned on me that there was this, these events when I was a child where I developed this belief that I didn't matter. When I was younger, like my mum had a terrible time of separating from my dad. She lived in a women's hostel for, you know, separated women with me and my elder brother. And my older brother was, because he was older than me, he kind of understood what was going on. And he, he, you know, he was so much closer to my dad. And, you know, he used to really kick off and create loads of, of force and hassle. And, and I don't even know if it is a memory or it's just something that I have in my brain where I seem to rem remember my mum saying, you're a good lad, you. you never any bother. You know, you just sit there, you're quiet, you don't kick, you don't kick off, you don't make a fuss like your brother, you, you just you just no bother. And I developed this thought that, well, that's how I get my praise, that's how I get my recognition, just like not being not making a fuss, not doing anything. And I developed this thought that I just didn't matter. And there was a, a series of other events that knowing now what I know. I completely interpreted it the wrong way. But as a young child, a developing mind, I interpreted it as more evidence that I just didn't matter. And I remember driving along and I was just saying to myself repeatedly, I, I didn't matter. I didn't matter. I didn't matter. And I was just pouring with tears. And I drove on saying that for about 20, 30 minutes where I had this realisation that I just didn't matter. And then I tied that back to... You know, no wonder I have these periods where I just seem to sabotage what I'm doing because I don't deserve any real results. I don't deserve a good image. And, you know, a good image is for, for other people. Like, they deserve it. I, I'm all right. I then had this other belief as like another layer that I was tough and I was strong and I determined and I could get through stuff. So that meant that in sabotaging my own progress, I, what I then started doing is I layered on the fact that other people are more important. And, and this got really serious when I was in the military because I would volunteer for real shit jobs or real dangerous activities and, and, and missions to protect other people so that other people didn't have to do it because I didn't matter. They did, you know. And, and I didn't matter. And I started getting reckless with that. And then I went on to do some other stuff that just all revolves around this idea that I didn't matter. Now, what I must stress is like, this is not my mum's fault. This is not like a, oh, I'm a victim and you should have done this and you should have done that. You know, it is just, it is. Everyone's doing the best they can with what they've got. And I just interpreted it this way. And it wasn't my older brother's fault because... He had his own shit that he was dealing with and sorting out and he interpreted it in his own way. This is just how I'd interpret it. Until this point, now I'm 46 next month, 
And no, 47, I don't know, whatever, however old I am, I don't know. And I'm dealt with this. I didn't even know it was there, you know, but it's definitely affected every part of my life. In so many ways, from my relationships, to my earning potential, to where I've lived, to what I've done, to my own health, my own well-being. You know, there was a time when I was living in a rusty old van, washing in a local freaking stream, because I just thought, well, I don't matter, it doesn't matter, I didn't matter to society, I don't matter to anybody or anything, and I just didn't care. Now, what Carl Jung teaches is that you to learn to integrate this part into yourself. And like I said, it, it can be tough. I mean, it's very raw, this idea that I don't matter. So a lot of these, what I'm talking about now, I've, I've learned through studying business. And, and in particular, there's a couple of you know, people that have put stuff on, on, uh, on YouTube, a guy called Sam Ovens, who does lots of business consultancy and, and that kind of thing. And, and he first introduced me to this. Uh, and then a couple of other guys, including Charlie Morgan, who they need credit for this and pretty much regurgitating everything they teach in business. But I think it's really relevant to, to weight loss and health and fitness. Uh, so I want to make it really relevant and share this to, to, to you guys, really. Make it really relevant to you. So the process of integration, it, it can be tough. You know, there's, there is a whole thing and you might need a bit of guidance on it because it's very easy to dip your toe and think, oh yeah, oh that was raw, that really struck a nerve and upset me. But you don't actually integrate it. Um, there's two methods. So shadow work in itself is a whole topic, it's a whole series of, of therapy that it's beyond me to kind of teach or lead you through. I just want to highlight the fact that it's there. But one thing that you can do is a, a practice called parts integration. Now... This is something that we, we've done a lot of in the past at boot camp because people often come to boot camp and, you know, all they, they want, although they want to lose weight and improve their image, they've got these deep-rooted bits of trauma that, that prevents it, you know, and we have to do some work to integrate those and to, and to show them that actually both parts of you, they, they want the same thing. And this is the thing when we talk about like, integration, you know, and we say... You know, the, the adult develops to protect the child. Well, the adult and the child, they both want the same thing. They both want you as a whole to be safe and secure. They just come at it from different ways. And this to and fro, this constant to and fro is what causes this oscillation in our progress. The way that Sam Othens and Charlie Morgan talk about it is you imagine like you're, you're in a pool and someone throws you a beach ball, okay, and you're like, oh, beach ball, and you try and hide it, you know, you push it down under the surface of the water, and it's gone for all intents and purposes, but with the shadow, other balls keep getting thrown at you, and you keep pushing them down, and at some point, one of these balls is going to pop back up, okay? All of them are fighting to come back up, and this is why, you know, we sabotage ourselves. Often, like, like it becomes just becomes a trait of our own that we just sabotage ourselves all the time. And it can really mess you up, really mess you up if, if you don't deal with it. So where do we go from here? Um, there is a ton of stuff that you can do in regards to shadow work. Uh, I, as soon as I learned about it, I downloaded a ton of books and I started working through the books. I got myself a journal. Journaling is a massive part of of it. Um, now, if you want and you're interested in this, I will do another video or a couple of videos on on integrating the the shadow with yourself and and how to kind of dive down and, and work out if what what are your beach balls and what's certain you know what often surfaces. But for this video, I just wanted to show you that actually what you're battling. It is normal. Everybody's got a shadow self. It's not a competition. It's like my shadow is worse than your shadow because it's all relative. It is what it is. Uh, but it is a very powerful thing to work through and can have some dramatic positive effects on your weight loss, your fitness, your health, all those things. So I hope this has been beneficial to you. If you're struggling with consistency, you might want to check out this video um, that I did previously. And if you want more of these kind of videos, then let me know in the comments be below uh, and share it with your friends because that is the best way to let me know that I'm on the right track. So until the next time, take care.